Uh, the idea of cosmos is interesting, and again, the cosmos God. No, the is is not a God. It's just like when you look at the sun outside. Is the sun a God? No. It just is what it is. And this is the isness. And again, the recognition of this goes further than what a person is seeing or knows to be. This is this becomes very interesting. And there's much more to it than that. So again, uh, very few people will recognize this. So it becomes so unrecognizable according to the personal senses, the mind, etc., that it's just easier to just make the statement or claim that, oh, I don't believe this, it doesn't exist, there's no such thing. Fine, doesn't matter. It still is. So, you know, those who recognize it, they do. Those who don't, they don't. So, in the literal sense in this world, people try and define it every which way they can, when actually they really can't. And the best that I can define it as is is the is or the all is. And that doesn't define it at all. That just is created a label here. And each indi- each person must, for themselves, discover this if they choose to. But most people won't. Because for the most part, they will figure it doesn't exist. And as we uh, look at the look at the uh, the so-called levels of life and the scale, and Paul uh, drew them out too, uh, you have the five psychic uh, uh, levels: uh, the physical, astral, causal, mental, etheric, and then you have what I call the the sixth level, the deep dark border. Okay. Well, within that, we have all these definitions, and so basically, this is the uh, this is the the bubble of creation that most people refer to. Beyond that, nothing exists for people because it cannot be defined. So where we are at here, things are defined in a particular way. So all we can do, all I can do, is refer people to start to test for themselves what else there is. And so this is where the real guidance comes in uh, with the real guides on the real side. And that is is that a step at a time, they you might say they lead a person into recognizing the reality of first of themselves, and then the true reality life is. But it doesn't stop there. It's an endless journey. There is no end to it. And so, uh, as we are uh, all sharing our experiences and ideas here, many times there becomes a lot of confusion. And so it's just like, uh, you know, a captain sailing a ship across the sea. You know, you have an endless sea there, so, uh, you know, very few people know the direction, so they look to the captain to uh, sail the vessel. And you might say, hopefully, that he knows what he's doing. So, again, uh, you know, life is taking the risk. Uh, Like you had the question there, do people believe me or not? Well, again, it's, it's really not about me. All I'm doing is sharing my experiences, uh, and saying that there is more than there wa- than what there has been. That's what I'm saying. But, uh, you know, people get stuck, and it's understandable, with what is created in the past. And we see that all over the earth. Most people are stuck with what was created in the past, and they're not looking at what life is now. You know, when Paul was here, as an example, uh, when Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, and when Paul was here in 1965, Life's just got a lot bigger. And what has taken place and what has been created, that's fine. But that's not the reality life is now. And this is what we keep expressing, but most people don't get it, so they will miss it. And for the most part, um, they will constantly stay in the dream, uh, the the psychic bubble, the, the bubble of creation, until they recognize that there is more than what they've agreed to from being created in the past. Yeah, it becomes very interesting, this journey. Well, actually, in the beginning, when we, if we go back to the beginning of this planet, when it was ready, the reptilians came here and created everything, basically. And uh, we have the offshoots, which is like the witches, which are into satanic, uh, uh, you know, sacrifices and what have you. That's all over, even into the political and religious systems. That's uh, normal. 
okay, that's doing business as usual. And then you have the vampires and the werewolves and the gargoyles and the demons. They're all offshoots of the reptilians. And, yes, you have all these movies like, uh, you know, uh, Moonlighting and all these things or whatever they are about vampires and what have you. And, uh, yeah, they're they're played on a seductive romantic level to where people actually want to be part of these things but not realizing that uh, as they're seduced by what we call the influence, that uh, as they continue on with their future lifetimes, no, they, they're not beautiful anymore. They become hideous, uh, like gargoyles and lizards, uh, because you evolve downwards, you might say, and this is what has happened to the reptilians. Uh, they're struggling uh, with what they've decided over the eons, and so they're trying to actually utilize the humans to try and get back, but uh, uh, they can't until they change their mind, just like in uh, The Lord of the Rings, uh, where Gollum was obsessed with the power, and he was one of the villagers with the hobbits, and he was Schmied, and all of a sudden he became Gollum uh, because of the power aspect, and you see it in this movie too, chasing uh, some kind of power idea, some kind of control uh, of a physical nature, and the end result is always the same. And that's very real. That's cause and effect. And so, but people still do it. They still chase this idea instead of really looking for something real and waking up to it. And it's demonstrated so many times. This movie demonstrates it very well. Again, uh, the two heroes of the movie, you know, they play it straight. Uh, they're very real. Uh, with what they're doing, and they make it through. They see what's going on, and they're okay where everybody else uh, self-destructs. And for many more lifetimes, too, this is what is not seen because there is a veil drawn. You don't see lifetime to lifetime, and most people do not have the awareness to see through uh, this dimension. They become one-dimensional, uh, but they did uh, portray a, uh, a dual-dimensional aspect here when they showed... Uh, you know, these uh, the guys basically going over into the astral realm and sitting there watching all this. This is very real, too. It's very, very real. It's just that with the human eye, most people don't see this, but it's really taking place all the time. Uh, there are astral people all around here uh, that uh, see what's going on. And, you know, everybody meets them in their dreams, but they don't know what's, uh, what's taking place because most people d have decided that their dreams don't mean anything anyhow but they've really left their body and went into another dimension. So this movie does portray that very, very well. Everything is exposed, uh, just like in this world. Uh, everything is exposed, but who's paying attention? So, again, the world goes into a demise, and many, many in innocent people get caught up in this, and people don't have to do that. Do the new you and wake up or stay lost, uh, your choice.